An agreement on how to pay for a new public safety radio system in Scotchland County is not likely to happen by a June deadline set by Motorola to accept a special financing package that would spread out payments for up to 10 years. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, county commissioners spent 90 minutes this week discussing the issues, ultimately agreeing to provide $1.7 million towards the cost of dispatch center infrastructure, with the remaining $2.7 million to be split among the county and 10 communities based on population. That was not enough to get city representatives to agree to footing that cost, in addition to radios for their own police, fire and EMS during a communication center advisory board meeting on Tuesday. Scottsbluff Councilmember Jordan Colwell was among those discussing the problems. It's black or white. Do you have the money or not? And I can say that we don't right now. I think everybody was prepared with the radio cost. Right. But the back in the corner shop. That was the discussion. And when we see it in the minutes that Motorola was here and we discussed the radio project, it was strictly radios. It was never infrastructure. Scottsdale City Manager Dustin Reef also noted just the cost of the radios is a big ask for smaller communities and rural fire districts that don't have authority to borrow funds and have to save years for any large project. Advisory board members asked county officials to provide more detailed infrastructure cost information to present to elected officials and in turn the county will be asking each city and other districts to sign off on a letter supporting the project even if hammering out funding details takes additional time. With the latest round of severe storms moving through the area Thursday evening, bringing you some large hail to the area. Reports and pictures sent directly to KNB News showed hailstones of approximately the size of a silver dollar outside of Torrington. National Weather Service reports indicated several locations in Goshen County reporting hail from ping pong to golf ball size hail. No tornadoes reported, but Kimball had reports of around one inch hail and Weld County, Colorado, up to three inches in diameter. Forecasters say there's a slight risk for isolated severe thunderstorms this evening in parts of the Panhandle, with the potential of localized quarter to golf ball sized hail in the strongest storms, and even a brief landspout tornado cannot be fully rolled out. Bill Boyer's in with your weekend weather forecast right after this here on KNEB.TV News. At Platte Valley Bank, we believe it shouldn't cost you money to access your money. That's why we offer free ATMs anytime, anywhere. Whether you are across town or traveling abroad, there won't be an added expense to access the funds in your Platte Valley Bank account. Free ATMs are just one of the great benefits of banking with us. Stop by to talk to one of our friendly associates to discuss what else Platte Valley Bank has to offer. Logos and Gearing is the place to get all of your school spirit gear, personalized gifts, and promotional items for your business and employees and banners for any special event. Logos is also the only place to stop for custom screen printing or embroidery. You can even design it yourself on their interactive website. Stop into Logos today. They'll design it, print it, and have it to you in no time. There's no job too big or small for Logos. That's Logos in Gearing. If you're like me, you're willing to travel for a good steak and a great dining experience. Bobby Joe's Branding Iron in downtown Bayard has just that. Some of the Panhandle's tastiest flat iron steaks, ribeyes, and even prime rib. Pair that with a western dining experience in our quiet dining room or fun-filled main dining area, you and your family are sure to have a great night out on the town. So if you're looking for a great new restaurant to try, you just gotta head on over to Bobby Joe's Branding Iron in Bayard, open Tuesday through Sunday for lunch and dinner.
This is KNEB.TV weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. We're going to be dealing with some scattered thunderstorms across the e area this evening. Some of those could be strong to severe, similar to last night here across the area. Not everybody's going to get some storms, but if you do, uh, they're going to be under the gun for some large hail, damaging winds. Can't even rule out a couple of tornadoes as well. And that's not just tonight, but tomorrow and Sunday as well. We'll dry out Monday for a brief period of time for bringing some more storms into the forecast for the middle portions of next week. 84 yesterday after a morning low of 51. We didn't get below 60 this morning here across the area. Nothing in the rain gauge. We certainly could use it and we'll hopefully get some moisture coming in here. You can see this push of cooler air coming from the north and west and that's prompting some thunderstorms to develop here across the area. 52 in Rapid, 48 right now in Casper. Compare that with 83 in North Platte, 82 in Ogallala, 83 in Valentine, but 52 in Lusk. Again, you can see the cooler temps just off to the northwest of us. Strong gusty winds out of the south, southeast, 20, 25, 35 miles an hour, blowing in uh, some very humid air here to the area, and that's going to continue for the next uh, couple of days. Let's zoom in here and show you that we are the only area really in the whole country under the gun for some severe weather. Uh, we will zoom in a little closer here and show you what we're expecting in terms of threats for tonight uh, as we go across the area. A couple of tornadoes are possible uh, in this area. Basically, it's a small area, but in that yellow shaded area, we could see a couple of tornadoes. Scattered areas of large hail could be dealing with some very large hail out of this. High winds are also possible. Now, as we go to tomorrow, you're going to see that area expand, get a little bigger, go into portions of central Nebraska, most of the Panhandle and a portion of southeast Wyoming. Same situation for tomorrow. Uh, a lower chance, I think, of tornadoes tomorrow. Large hail and high winds are still going to be possible with this system. And very possibly, Sunday may be our best threat of severe weather. And uh, right now, it's a slight risk, but may need to upgrade portions of this area as well. Same situation, scattered large hail damaging winds and some isolated tornadoes. We'll keep an eye on Sunday as a possible upgrade for some severe weather outlooks. So it's time to think about what do we do in the event of a tornado? We're getting to that time of the year. What does that mean? Well, a tornado watch simply means be prepared. Conditions are favorable for the development of tornadoes. Now, as you look at a tornado warning, what does that mean? That means a tornado has been spotted or indicated by radar. So now is the time to take action. You want to take action when a tornado warning is issued. And in the rare event that a tornado emergency comes out, that means there's a severe threat to human life and catastrophic damage. If you hear a tornado emergency, that is the most severe uh, warning that they issue. Very rarely do they issue tornado emergencies. But when you hear a tornado warning, that means a tornado is spotted or indicated by radar. A watch simply means that conditions are favorable for the development of severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. That's a term that uh, sometimes gets confusing to people, the watch versus the warning and the emergency situation. Important to know here as we go through the next couple of nights. Thunderstorms across the area, they're going to push rapidly to the northeast, much like they did yesterday, and then we're going to clear out overnight. So the storms aren't going to last a long time tonight. They'll clear out with the loss of daytime heating temperatures overnight. 39 in Lusk, 50 in Scotts Bluff. You can see 60 there in Oshkosh in 63 in Ogallala. That's thanks to that humid air not allowing those temps to fall. Now tomorrow we start the day with mostly cloudy skies. It's going to remain cloudy through the day and then much like today a brief period of clearing and then boom another round of thunderstorms going to lift across the area tomorrow and again uh, much like today racers from the south to the north. Highs tomorrow going to be all over the map at 55 at Lusk, 81 in Ogallala. We're kind of in that dividing line of the air masses. We are going to see some precip again. Some of us not going to get anything at all. These particular models training some of these thunderstorms over the area. And if that happens, almost two inches in Valentine is what this one's showing. Again, important not to look at a specific area, just to focus in on the longer term of what is coming. And then more precip focusing on uh, the heart of this uh, panhandle into portions of north central Nebraska. That area under the gun with both of these forecast models. The GFS throwing a lot of rain out. We'll see if this uh, holds true, but the good news is there appears to be rain coming on the horizon. Breezy, thunderstorms early, some severe, 50 for a low. 
Tomorrow, repeat, rinse and repeat today. Afternoon, strong to severe thunderstorms. 69 your high, much cooler tomorrow as we get on the other side of that system. And then back to near 80 again for Sunday. And Monday, Tuesday, we dry out finally and get rid of the thunderstorm chances for a couple of days to bring them back in for Wednesday and possibly further on through the week. Important to remember, keep an ear on the uh, uh, radio and the TV tonight. Keep an eye on the sky and be prepared for severe thunderstorms if they approach your area, not only tonight, but tomorrow and Sunday as well. The year 2020 was. Now's the time to get out and travel this summer to see family and friends you were not able to see this last year. Spend more time enjoying your trip by flying United Airlines, operated by SkyWest with daily flights to and from Denver. Reserve your flight today and remember United Miles can be earned and redeemed with your flights. While at the airport, stop and enjoy authentic Italian food at Roma Italian Restaurant. And don't forget, Thrifty Car Rental is here for your car rental needs. Make life easier, relax, and hit your ride with your BFF, Western Nebraska Regional Airport. Welcome to Kelly's, home of the Valley's best selection of wine, spirits, and beer. Whether you're brand loyal to the tried and true brew or really enjoy trying something different and new, Kelly's has something for everyone. Family owned and operated and right on your way on West 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Kelly's Liquor, if you can't find it at Kelly's, it's not worth drinking. We have all learned lately that our homes are our sanctuaries. And at Renewal by Anderson, many people invest in our windows to keep out the bitter cold. But they're often thrilled when it's blazing hot outside and their Renewal by Anderson windows are keeping their homes so cool with much lower utility bills. Renewal by Anderson windows make life at home so much more comfortable, whether it's 10 degrees below zero or 100. We can't control outside, but we sure can inside. Invest in your home now with Renewal by Anderson. You'll High Plains Auto Club presents the Father's Day Rock and Roll Classic Friday, June 18th. Registration begins at 2 p.m. at the Gearing Civic Center with a welcome barbecue, cruise for cash, ice cream social. Saturday, June 19th, the parade, show and shine, and awards banquet. To enter, go to highplainsautoclub.com or call 308-765-2418. This event is sponsored by the Meat Shop, Dairy Queen, First State Bank, Frank Parts Company. Welcome back. A 45-year-old Scottsdale man could be facing up to 20 years in prison following his 2020 arrest for taking candid photos and videos of young girls and adult victims. This week in Scottsdale County District Court, Daryl Dean pleaded no contest to charges of possession of child pornography and intrusion on a person without consent. In exchange for his no contest plea, three similar charges were dismissed. The investigation began after a woman discovered an intimate video on Dean's phone taken without her permission in March of 2019, and later on the phone found inappropriate pictures of a young girl under 10 years old and a video of a partially clad teen girl in Dean's bathroom that appeared to come from a camera on the garage. We'll be back in court on July 30th for sentencing. Well, a Scottsdale man serving life in prison for the stabbing death of his girlfriend has lost his latest appeal with the Nebraska Supreme Court. Lucio Munoz had appealed his denial of post-conviction relief that came without an evidentiary hearing. He claimed his counsel was ineffective for failure to investigate witnesses, make an alibi defense, present expert witness testimony, and move in lemony to exclude statements. However, today the Nebraska Supreme Court ruled that his claims did not warrant an evidentiary hearing because the post-conviction motion alleged no specific statement or evidence that should have been ruled in that motion of limine. The High Court affirmed Scottsdale County District Court's dismissal of Munoz's motion for post-conviction relief. And Nebraskans receiving Social Security income will pay less in taxes on that income each year until it's fully exempt in 2030 under a bill that won final approval from lawmakers. Senators passed the gradual tax phase-out in a 41-0 vote. It now heads to Governor Pete Ricketts, who is expected to sign it. The bill would reduce the taxes paid on Social Security income by 5% this year, 20% next year, and 30% in 2023. The exemption would continue to grow until it hits 100% in the year 2030. Supporters say the bill would help ease the tax burden on seniors and make Nebraska an attractive place compared to neighboring states for people to retire. Well, still to come, your Friday Five, community calendar, and our first Fridays in the field for 2021. KNB.TV News will be back right after this.
Who is Hydrotex? Hydrotex manufactures and distributes over 300 different high-performance lubricants, including fuel conditioners, hydraulic and transmission fluid, and more. We've been helping customers improve their operations for more than 80 years with products made in the USA. We sell directly to customers and can even deliver right to your door to offer excellent service and value. Our products are made to exceedingly extend drain and grease intervals to reduce maintenance and labor costs to improve the budget. Whether you're in a factory, farm fleet, or like to go fast, Hydrotex is here to help. Visit your local Hydrotex dealer in person or online today. of life, a fence length of time. You fought the floods, snow, and sweltering heat, and lifted breathing and settled pain. With a smile and a cry, you've strengthened your community and future generations, sometimes with nothing to say, often can't say enough. Like, let me do it again. We lost Rebel. Missing. Gone. Can't find her. Nowhere to be found. Other words for missing. Away. Lost. Removed. My personal favorite. Lacking. Omitted. <laughs> Left out. Oh. Not present. Unaccounted for. Missing in action. Astray. All those words could describe Rebel Cicloche right now. Needless to say, she's lost and we cannot find her. She's lost, but the footage from the many years of service she dedicated to this company is still right here at the mothership. <laughs> Please enjoy! <laughs> <laughs> Library number one. Why is she laughing? Watermelons are grown across the U.S., but about... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's not that funny at all. No. Okay, maybe I Thursday was National Burger Day. <laughs> you sounded so disappointed. <laughs> um, do that again because I did a weird thing with my face. If you're undomesticated like Rebel, you can mm, grab I a bag of this a, and There's bring. a word for that. It's called feral. <laughs> Library number two, what in the world is she doing? <laughs> hey, guys. The width of my head is just really impressive. I don't know if I am I putting on weight. <laughs> Probably. Library number three. This is why she is not allowed in public. Just kidding. That's a little harsh, but for real. Give him a kiss. <laughs> just spit on me. <laughs> hey, good looking. What you got cooking? Some seeds? <laughs> I like I always like the big white pumpkins. Library number four, Rebel versus Food. Rebel, show me how you open that box. A Velfita. We don't have to tell them. They're upside down. I want to cry. 
I'm meeting the parents so soon. <laughs> They're nice people, I promise. <laughs> okay, that's enough. That's all. No! Stop! <laughs> Stop that! Trim and thinly slice scallions, separating whites from greens. A few moments later. The scallion whites, I threw those away. Why do we need scallion whites? Did you read the directions? <laughs> okay. No? Go back. Trim. <laughs> now you have to dig them out of the trash. I'm not eating them out of the trash. They can't be that good. Trim and thinly slice scallions, separating whites from greens. And finally, library number five. Uh, does she call that singing? Rebel's not actually missing. We know exactly where she's at. She's in Broken Bow this summer with an awesome internship. Congrats on that internship, Rebel. She will do great things. <laughs> we need her back. <laughs> Kinda have to figure out a different way to end this thing. I'm That'll scared. do it. I'm It'll scared. be Bryce and I from now on on Friday 5, so... Lord Best of luck all. to everybody. We'll see you next week. Lord help us. This is Mike. Mike likes his car. Mike likes to save money. And Mike likes to breathe. So Mike fills up with E15 with 15% American ethanol. The clean octane in E15 gives Mike the performance he wants from his engine and the clean air he wants for his family. Better yet, E15 costs less at the pump. Higher octane, cleaner air, lower cost. E15 sure gives Mike a lot to like. Discover E15 with American ethanol. New and old, you've walked the rows of life, a fence length of time. You fought the floods, snow, and sweltering heat, and lifted breathing and settled pain. With a smile and a cry, you've strengthened your community and future generations, sometimes with nothing to say, often can't say enough. Like, let me do it again. New looks and new decor can be found at Compliments for You and Your Home. Check out the newest styles from Tribal, Charlie B, Ethel, and more. Compliments also has the shoes, purses, and jewelry for any occasion. Plus, right now, get 20% off all clearance apparel. While here, take a look at our solar lights and felt birdhouses. Finally, visit our newest addition, Katie Chandler and her salon. All this at Compliments for You and Your Home, 1708 Broadway, downtown Scotts Bluff. When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a peek at what's happening on your weekend community calendar.
That's a look at today's community calendar, brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. Find out what convenient really means at the Western Travel Terminal. Start with our great selection of food and drinks from for real milkshakes and fresh brewed coffee to snacks and hot food. Next, check out our beer and spirits with their everyday low prices. Finally, let us work for you with our full service gas station and automatic truck and car wash. All this can be found at 822 South Beltline in Scotts Bluff. Western Travel Terminal, your convenient shopping, restaurant, and full service gas leader. Why bank at a local community bank? When you choose a local community bank, you keep money in our local economy. That money helps support local jobs, schools, and businesses. Money that helps fund a stronger and prosperous community for us all to enjoy and live in. At Platte Valley Bank, we are here to help build and support the community we love being a part of. We believe that together, we can make great things happen. Platte Valley Bank. And finally tonight, Clay Patton with the Rural Radio Network in with your Friday Five. This is KNEB.TV Ag News from the FNBO Ag Desk. FNBO, the great big small bank. Welcome to another edition of Fridays in the Field brought to you by FNBO, the great big small bank. Excited to be back with you for another growing season and typically I follow row crop operations. Last year was the TAPS Testing Ag Performance Solutions Program. This year though, I'm going a little off the beaten path. Though when you look at the agriculture history of Nebraska, it's something that's very popular. Prior to Prohibition, there were more acres of grapes in Nebraska than there were acres of corn. And that brings us now to Max Creek Winery and Vineyard near Lexington, Nebraska. Our farmer that we're going to be following through is one of the McFarland family. It's Mac McFarland, better or Max McFarland, better known as Mac. And Mac, thank you so much for having us out here today. As we get started, first, give us the overview. Kind of tell us about what Max Creek Winery and Vineyard is today. Well, <laughs> Uh, that's that's kind of a loaded question. If if you ask the the boys, they may tell you it's a, actually a hobby that's gone bad. Uh, but uh, it started out uh, uh, spring of 2000. We actually planted our first grapes here, and uh, the intention was uh, uh, just to grow some grapes. And at that time, there were three wineries in the state. We were going to sell what grapes we might get to them. But the main you know, I think the main uh, reason we got into that, my wife and I are both farm kids. We grew up just north here in the Eddyville Sumner area. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it was one of those things we wanted to get back to our roots and, and, and plant something and see if we could make it grow and, and sweat and get dirty and all that kind of stuff. So we started out with like 100 grapes, uh, vines, and uh, had real good luck. And we added some more and added some more. And then, uh, I don't know, uh, down the road, uh, I get blamed for the shift in vision uh, from just selling grapes to other wineries to how about we build a winery. And so the learning curve has been pretty steep, but uh, uh, 2002 we opened the doors to the winery. Two years ago we uh, uh, added a uh, brewery. Uh, the first year out I think we, I think we produced maybe 1,200 gallons of wine. Uh, this year we'll probably knock on wood and Mother Nature cooperating will probably be in the 16 to 18,000 gallons range. So what an impressive <laughs> leap of faith that was and how the <laughs> dividends have paid for them. When it comes to growing of the vines and of the grapes, this year has been a little bit of an unusual year. We've held some cooler temperatures into it. Where are we at in the grape growing process? You know, this year has really been a, a puzzle to me. Um, the good news is we, we had a very slow, gradual cooling down in the fall which helps these vines go uh, dormant. Uh, and fortunately, they really hit, I think, the depths of their dormancy uh, about February. And that's about the time we start to actually prune. We had, the end of February, we hit minus 36 degrees out here, uh, which is, I don't think I've ever seen it that cold, and I've been around for quite a few years. We uh, grow hybrids, uh, regional cold climate grapes that are bred for this climate cool growing season, relatively short growing season compared to California, uh, and very volatile temperatures, and like I said, down to 20, 25 below. We hit minus 36, and I'm going, oh, this isn't gonna, this isn't gonna go well. Um, 
we kept pruning and I don't, I don't think we were hurt hardly at all with that. And it'll be several weeks before we're able to visit again on another episode of Fridays in the mm -hmm. Field. So what are going to be some things that you're looking at for the vineyard here over the next couple of weeks? Well, um, with, with bud breaks starting to happen now, uh, we'll get these things all budded out and, uh, and they will bloom. Uh, we have a little bit of spraying that we're going to be doing. Uh, we use ozone spray and essential oil sprays. We don't use any chemical uh, pesticides uh, at all. We will, uh, we will get them sprayed and nice and healthy and all of that. Um, Going to do a little fertilizing, both granular on, uh, on the ground and foliar once we get the, the leaves out and the shoots out. Uh, and uh, that's going to keep us busy for the next, uh, certainly the next few weeks. Uh, as soon as we get the spraying done, then we'll uh, call our, our friends over at uh, Long uh, Honey and they'll bring the bees back. Uh, we have grapevines that are perfect flowers. They don't need help to pollinate, but we've, we've found that uh, uh, every little bit can help and they do help us along. So they'll be here for the rest of the summer. Thank you again to Max McFarland, better known as Mac, for taking us through Max Creek Winery here near Lexington. It's Fridays in the Field, brought to you by FNBO, the great big small bank. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday.